Most pet owners will know all too well that ticks and fleas and all other parasites can really be a constant burden for our poor dogs. I think for us as well. As a pet owner myself, I'm very excited to chat to our next guest this morning, who's here to introduce a truly revolutionary product that treats and prevents parasites in one easy chewable. And here to tell us all about Next Guard Spectra is Dr. Michelle Enslin, the resident vet at Boehringer Engelheim. Dr. Michelle, good morning. How are you? I'm great, thanks, Graham. How are you? I'm doing very well, thanks. The, the subject matter notwithstanding, I know it, it's a difficult thing, but it's something that we all need to stay on top of. I've got two beautiful pups, and this is something their health matters a lot to me, like I think all pet owners, and parasites can be a massive problem. We all know that dogs are prone to catching ticks, fleas, mites, worms, especially going into a new season. How serious are parasites and can they be? And what are the complications that can arise if left untreated? Well, Graham, the complications can range from mild to incredibly severe, uh, depending mainly on the type of parasite that we're dealing with, as well as uh, the length of time that uh, that particular parasite infestation has left untreated for. So if we are dealing, for an example, with an internal parasite load, such as uh, a worm burden, um, some of the major complications that you could see would be the onset of very severe a bloody diarrhea and um, when we see a bloody diarrhea it can affect more than one organ system in the dog they can develop quite severe anemia and as a result um, it can affect them quite substantially later on if we're dealing on the other hand with uh, external parasites one of the more common things that we see is tick bite fever that's usually what pet owners uh, understand to be and uh, Oh gosh, sorry, my cat has just. <laughs> it's making it's making a guest appearance. It's it's perfect timing. <laughs> so external parasites uh, would be your uh, your tick burden, and one of the major complications that we see from that is the onset of tick bite fever. And um, the problem with this is that many many ticks in South Africa actually contain another type of parasite within their saliva, known as Babesia, or more colloquially known as Bilirubin. In their saliva, as soon as they bite your dog, that parasite moves into the bloodstream of your dog. And uh, that's when we start to see really severe disease uh, manifestations resulting. Because what it does is it causes um, massive blood loss in your animal. And if that dog does not receive a blood transfusion, uh, many of them can actually die. So the complications can be really severe. And one of the very... Um, I would say one of the more important complications of parasite burden that isn't very often spoken about is the zoonotic potential. I'm referring to the fact that these parasites can be transmissible to the human members of our family, namely um, children as well as immune compromised individuals, such as the elderly or uh, maybe someone who is undergoing chemotherapy, for an example. So let's go to the source. How do dogs contract these various parasites? Where, what's the, the entry point, if you will. Yeah, so this is quite heavily dependent on the type of parasite that we're dealing with, whether we're dealing with an internal parasite or external. External parasites, they mainly sort of reside in the external environment, such as on the grass, like very high grass blades. And when we're dealing with internal parasites, you tend to see the eggs and the more immature stages of that worm in, in the soil um, outside. But one of the big misconceptions, I think, with parasite infestations is that many pet owners believe that if they have a dog that is strictly indoor, or my dog never leaves the yard, for an example, they believe that maybe their pet is um, absolved of the risk of contracting these parasites. And this simply is not the case. A flea, for an example, um, if you see an adult jumping flea on your, on your dog, what's actually happening there is that flea is only representing 5% of the total population what happens as a result of that is the rest of the, the, the parasite population, so the sub-adult members of that life cycle are all existing within the internal environment um, of your home. So carpets, skirting boards, even your dog's bedding, all of these places represent a significant risk for infestation. And this is something that we need to keep in mind when you are selecting a tick and flea product, that we are um, selecting one that is actually catering 
for controlling the, the environmental burden as well, not just on the host, which is your dog. Before everyone races out and cleans absolutely every corner of their house, how do we identify if our pet has been infected by one of these, these parasites in the three groups that you've covered? Well, Graham, this is a bit more of a tricky one because uh, most of the time the symptoms um, are quite non-specific. So if you have a dog that is perhaps maybe losing quite a lot of weight or maybe is not coming to greet you with the same level of energy that it may do usually, that animal may be showing signs suggestive of a parasite burden. Um, if you have a dog that is scratching quite a lot, that could be an indication of mites or fleas. But like I said, it's really nondescript symptoms. And that's why prevention rather than treating after the fact becomes so important. And that's where uh, Next Guard Spectra comes into play because it's got this amazing preventative aspect um, of it in the monthly chew. Um, many of, and oftentimes these dogs that have got parasite burdens don't show symptoms at all. They tend to just soldier on without any kind of sign of disease processes. And then when you present your dog at the vet clinic at a later stage, maybe for his annual vaccination or checkup, the vet often will pick up a worm burden or ticks and fleas in the consultation. And you really just don't want it to get to that point. So now we know that um, NextGuard obviously works on all fronts, which is amazing, and it's a chewable. Can it work on all dogs, all breeds of any age? The NextGuard Spectra spectrum, what falls under that? So NextGuard Spectra um, is presented in five different weight sizes, which is really great, all ranging from a minimum of two kilograms all the way up to 60 kilograms. If you have a dog that weighs more than 60 kilograms, then all you need to do is just give them the chew for that weight class and then select one of the other classes in order to make up the correct dosage. Um, in terms of age, uh, it's safe to use for puppies as young as eight weeks of age. So oh. if you have your puppy um, you know, coming in for its first or second vaccination at the vet, for an example, that's where NextGuard Spectra is perfect. And of course, it's safe for all breeds. And it really does tackle every parasite that you've mentioned, which is amazing. Where is it available? Um, so it's available at any veterinary clinic around the country. Um, if they do not have it in stock, you can always just ask reception to order it in for you. And it's also readily available at um, any vet shop around the country. Well, I know your, your cat personal assistant is going to come in and tell you you've got another Zoom meeting in a moment, so I'm going to let you go for now, Doctor. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We really appreciate your time and your insights. Great. Thanks so much for having me, Graham. You can protect your dog from parasites like ticks, fleas, mites, even worms with just Next Guard Spectra, and it's as easy as feeding your dog one tasty chewable just once a month. For more information on this amazing product, you can visit nextguard.co.za, and I really suggest you do. New Next Guard Spectra, the broad spectrum monthly chew that protects inside and out in one easy step. Next Guard Spectra, just one chew, so easy for you.